ஆழ்கா நம்முடன் சில்ட்ரன் ஹோப் எவ்ரிபடி இஸ் டூயிங் குட் பீங் சேஃப் அட் ஹோம் அண்ட் பீங் ஹாப்பி அலாங் வித் யோர் ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸ் கன்வே மை ரிகார்ட்ஸ் டு யோர் பேரண்ட்ஸ் கிராண்ட் பேரண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் யோர் அதர் ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸ் பி எ குட் சில்ட்ரன் அட் ஹோம் லெட் மை எக்ஸ்டன் மை வாம் வெல்கம் for this wonderful social science video class okay so shall we enter to the class children yes get ready let us rock so as you know very well we are in fourth lesson of history that is south indian kingdoms right so the map what you can see in us the pallava territories okay the pink color shaded part which includes uh, bijapur kanji vellur okay that is mamallapuram the pink region which includes pallava territories the territories which were ruled by the pallava kings right so in this lesson the learning objectives of this lesson can be like you may come to know the southern indian states that emerged after the fall of the mauryan empire okay and also you may acquire information of the ruling dynasties such as pallavas chalukyas rashtrakutas and their domains also okay domains in the sense feudatories and uh, you may come to understand their contribution to society and also the culture with a reference to literature art and also architecture you may become familiar with artistic and architectural splendor of mamallapuram shore temple especially and also ellora monuments and elephanta cave temples right so these were some of the learning objectives which you come to learn under this lesson and as an introduction the south indian kingdoms so by the early 7th century okay till the last lesson we had learned about the 6th century so 6th century gets ended and now we are in 7th century by the early 7th century synchronizing the harsha's reign in the north the far south had come under the control of the pallava kings of kanchipuram okay and pallava sovereignty includes the domains of the cholas and also pandyas right so the pallava sovereignty that is the pallava kingdoms or territories which also includes the domains of cholas and also pandyas so the later are the then emerging as a ruling dynasties in their respective river valley regions like tungabhadra river valley kaveri river valley likewise okay and much of the central and eastern deccan was under the chalukyas of badami that is vatapi who were then pushed away by the rashtrakutas so the medieval period in india was marked by emergence of a regional centers of power so there was no single imperial power like mauryas or guptas who exercised the control over the greater part of india in this period okay so mauryas and guptas they exercised the control over the greater part of india but now it is not so okay the situation is not like so the pallavas who were the pallavas so the pallava kings ruled around the prosperous agrarian settlement an important trade center of kanchipuram especially kanchipuram on the south east coast of india okay south east coast even in the map you can you may able to see no south east coast of india and kanchipuram was well known to chinese and roman merchants from the flourishing trade center of kanchipuram the later pallavas extended their sovereignty okay they started to extend their uh, uh, region over all the tamil speaking regions during 7th and 8th centuries right so the central part of their kingdom however was tondai mandalam right tondai mandalam a large political region comprising northern parts of tamil nadu and the adjoining andhra districts right so their central part was sondai mandalam a large political region comprising which comprises northern parts of tamil nadu and also adjoining andhra districts okay as usual we have uh, some 
inscriptions okay sources like mandaka pattu cave eye hole inscription of plakes in 2 and uh, kasakudi plates also tells us about all the information about uh, these pallava kings and matta vilasa prahasana avanti sudra katha and uh, kalingathu parani periya puranam nandi kalambagam these are some literature written literature which tells us about the pallava kings and kingdoms okay and also foreign notices like accounts of chinese travelers like hyun sun everybody has written in their own books about these pallava kings and regions okay and now we may come to know about the pallava genealogy okay pallava genealogy so uh, that is who were the prominent kings there were many kings under them among them who were the prominent kings under this pallava genealogy so there were early pallava rulers who were feudatories of satavahanas okay there were early pallava rulers who were feudatories of satavahanas they were became the feudatories actually so they have to pay tax okay minor chiefs like minor chiefs so simha vishnu the son of simma varman 2 okay around 550 ad created a strong pallava kingdom after destroying the calabras okay after destroying calabras simma vishnu son of simha varman 2 he created a strong pallava kingdom okay after destroying the calabras he defeated many kings in the south including the cholas and bandias too his able son was mahendra varman 1 okay simha vishnu's able son was mahendra varman 1 he was succeeded by his son narasimha varman 1 okay just had like a uh, column column tabular column right flow chart so first simha vishnu son of simha varman 2 so simha varman 2 then simha vishnu then comes his son mahendra varman and then comes narasimha varman 1 so there are other prominent pallava rulers narasimha varman 2 uh, or raja simha okay raja simha he was also called to be narasimha varman 2 and nandi varman 2 the last pallava ruler was aparajita who was the last pallava ruler aparajita a p a r a j i t a aparajita was the last pallava ruler okay so the mahendra varman that is uh, he ruled about 600 to 630 ad that is 30 years contributed to the greatness of the pallava kingdom mahendra varman 1 was a follower of jainism the early parts of his rule okay and he embraced the saivism by the saivite that is saint upper saint upper that is thirunavukkarasar upper other name is thirunavukkarasar okay thirunavukkarasar saint upper he embraced the saivism by the saivite upper is, a, is an saivite okay he is an saivite he uh, my that uh, mahendra varman one was embraced saivism through him okay thirunavukkarasar through thirunavukkarasar other name for upper is Tirunavakarasar. Okay, he was a great pattern of art and architecture. So, he is known for introducing a new style to Dravidian architecture, which is referred to as Mahendra style. That is, Mahendra Varman also wrote plays like uh, Matta Vilasa Prahasana. Okay, the delight of the uh, drunkards in Sanskrit, which denigrates Buddhism. Okay, and Mahendra Varman's reign involved constant battles with western chalukya kingdom of badami under pulakesin 2 pulakesin seems to have defeated mahendra varman in one of the battles and taken over a large part of his territory that is vengai in the north his son narasimha varma 1 uh, who ruled over 630 to 668 avenged the defeat by capturing vatapi the capital of chalukyas so he set vatapi on fire and killing pulakesin in the process too okay he set vatapi on fire and killing pulakesan during this fight process okay so narasimha varman 2 narasimha varman 2 who ruled over 695 to 722 he is also known as raja simha okay whose name other name was raja simha narasimha varman 2 what is the other name for Nar narasimha varman 2 raja simha okay so was a great military strategist strategist 
who knows many strategy in war conquering the regions okay they are called to be strategist right so for example uh, for your better example we can take bagubali he is a great strategist right so even with that calabras while he is fighting how uh, deliberately he will be fighting right in the films we may seen okay so he engaged uh, he exchanged the ambassadors with china okay his reign was comparatively free from any political disturbance so therefore he could concentrate on temple building activities during his reign the famous kailasanatha temple at kanchipuram okay it is a world famous temple okay kailasanatha temple at kanchipuram was built right so if we take some titles have been adopted by many kings like simha vishnu avani simha mahendra varman one he have several titles like uh, uh, sankir uh, najati okay sankir najati and matta vilasa uh, gunabara and chitra karapuli and vichitra chitta these are the names of mahendra varma one and narasimha varma one mamallan vatapi kondan okay during the war he captured vatapi so that is why he is named to be vatapi kondan okay narasimha varma one and now pallava's contribution to architecture okay pallava's contribution to architecture so pallava period is known for architectural splendor especially right the shore temple and the various other temples carved from granite monoliths monoliths in the sense uh, carved by a single stone that is monoliths and varaha cave that mamallapuram are illustrious examples best examples okay spoken examples of pallava architecture so in the year 1984 mamallapuram was added to the list of unesco world heritage site okay this mamallapuram uh, this uh, is being the symbol of unesco okay world heritage site it not only added this been also the symbol right so pallava architecture can be classified as the follows right so first rocket temples that is mahendra varman style rocket temple in the sense mahendra varman style and then monolithic rathas and sculptural mandapas so this is named to be mamallan style and third one structural temples so rajasimhan style and nandi varman style right structural temples rajasimhan style and nandi varman style okay rocket temples monolithic rathas and sculptural uh, sculptural mandapas and structural temples so next is mahendra style so the best example of mahendra varma style monuments are cave temples at mandagapattu mahendravadi mamandar okay dalavanar tiruchirappalli vallam and tirukkalunkundram and siyamangalam so these were the places where we can see this mahendra style okay cave temple mahendra style so this is the best example of mandagapattu cave temples right and then comes for mamalla style so the five rathas that, that is chariots rathas you know very well chariots so the five rathas popularly called to be panja pandava rathas okay panja pandava rathas in even in mahabharatam we come to know the characters of uh, the main heroic characters like panja pandava right especially <coughs> sorry it signifies five uh, different temple architecture so each ratha has been carved out of a single rock this is the main feature special feature of this uh, rathas okay so they are called monolithic so if a temple or if an architecture is carved out by a single stone it is named to be monolithic so the popular mandapams that is pillared rocks they built are mahishasura mardini mandapam and then tirumurthi mandapam and also varaha mandapam varaha mandapam okay mahishasura mardini mandapam tirumurthi mandapam and varaha mandapam these were the mandapams popular mandapams they built so the most important among the mamalla style of architecture is the open art gallery so several miniature sculptures such as the figure of 
lice picking monkey okay lice picking lice you know no which uh, insect we will be having in our heads so lice picking monkey elephants of huge size and figure of the ascetic cat have been sculptured beautifully on the wall of a huge rock okay the fall of the river ganga from the head of the lord shiva and arjuna's pinnas arjuna's pinnas this is arjuna's pinnas okay so the arjuna's pinnas are notable among them right so the great pinnas panel is considered to be the world's largest open air bas relief right so next comes for rajasimha style okay so narasimha varman 2 that is narasimha varman 2's style narasimha varman 2 also known as rajasimha constructed structural temples using stone blocks so the best example for the structural temple is kailasanatha temple at kanchipuram so the temple which now you can see is kailasanatha temple okay at kanchipuram so this temple was built by using sandstones okay sandstones and kailasanatha temple is called rajasimheshwaram okay kailasanatha temple is called to be rajasimheshwaram so next comes for nandivarman style so the last stage of the pallava architecture is also represented by structural temples which was built by the later pallavas so the best example is vaikunda perumal temple at kanchipuram okay vaikunda perumal temple at kanchipuram vaikunda perumal temple is known for lord vishnu okay kailasanatha temple is meant for lord shiva okay that is saivism this is vaishnavism and vaishnavites built this okay the follower of vaishnavism built this so the picture now you can see is uh, seen in kanchi vaikunda perumal temple okay and how comes the society and culture so the pallavas supported jainism buddhism and also the vedic faith so they were great patrons of music painting and literature some of the pallava kings patronized the alvas and nayanmars you know very well alvas and nayanmars okay so these exponents of bhakti cult preached a new form of vaishnavism and saivism so among the saivites were upper and manika vasakar important saivites among the vaishnavites were nammalvar and andal okay so under saivism we can tell upper that is trinavakar sir okay the other name for upper is trinavakar sir and manika vasakar well known and well spoken right and uh, vaishnavites if we see nammalvar and andal so the bhakti movement aimed at preaching a popular faith in which prayers in tamil were preferred to those in sanskrit women were encouraged to participate in the religious congregations congregations is nothing like uh, literature meeting okay so the the tamil devotional cult was competitive with the buddhism and jainism so therefore the later suffered a gradual decline in most parts of tamil country that is how buddhism and Cha via jainism started to get wind up in india okay hinduism started to arose everywhere embraced people started to embrace this hinduism so if we take education and the literature gatika the monastery or center of learning at kanchi was popular during the pallava times and it attracted students from all parts of india and also abroad okay vatsaya who wrote nyaya bashya were a teacher at kanchi okay in gatika so it is a center of learning okay school like center of learning monastery or center of learning the treatise on dakshin chitram paintings of south india was compiled during the reign of mahendra varman 1 so the great sanskrit scholar dandin adorned in the court of narasimha varma 1 so dandin composed dashakumara charita so the baravi the great sanskrit scholar lived in the time of simha vishnu so he wrote kirta kirta arjuna an epic in verses so tamil literature had also flourished during the pallava rule devaram composed by nayanmars okay who composed the devaram nayanmars and nalayira divya prabandham composed by alvars this is very important devaram by nayanmars nalayira divya prabandham by alvars 
which are still chanted by devout people. Okay, even in uh, the month of Margadi and all, we used to uh, pray. And the Verman translated Mahabharata into Tamil as Bharata Venpa. Okay, Bharata Venpa. So, Mahabharata are Tamil translation named to be Bharata Venpa. Right? So, he did Perindevanar. By whom it was did? Perindevanar. So, next comes for Pallava art. So, the Pallava kings are although patronized fine arts. The music inscriptions in uh, Kudumiyani Malai and Tirumayam temples shows Pallava's interest in music too. The famous musicians Rudra Charya lived during Mahendra Varma once period. The sculpture of this period depict many images in dancing posters. So, with this, the administration under the Pallava kings has been got over and next comes for Chalukyas. So, in the next video, we will be learning about this Chalukyas. How comes their uh, administration was, right? So, with this, let me wish to complete this session. Before completing, I have a video for you children. Just watch it. has seen many empires. However, one of the most powerful to exist in that region was the Pallava dynasty. The Pallavas were great conquerors and patrons of art and architecture. They ruled for nearly 500 years. The Pallavas initially conquered the region of Tondai Mandalam in Pallavapuri right on the coastline. Shortly thereafter, a natural disaster occurred and the entire area was washed away by the sea. The Pallavas then moved to Kanchipuram and it was from there that they built their mighty empire which extended from northern Orissa to Tanjore and Trichy in the far south. Believed to be the first Pallav ruler who ruled in the early part of the 4th century, Skandavarman extended his territories from the Krishna River to Pennar in the south, all the way across to Bellary in the west. After having performed the Ashwamedha and various Vedic rituals, he earned the title of Supreme King of Kings devoted to Dharma. During the period of 350 to 575 BC, there were over 16 kings who ruled. King Sambhashivu ruled from 560 to 580 BC. He was a strong ruler who defeated the Cholas, Pandyas and Kalabras, which were the original rulers of the southern region. Sambhashivu was a Vaishnavite, a devotee of Lord Vishnu, and his portrait is present in the Adi Varaha temple in Mahabalipuram, Tamil Nadu. Shivu was followed by his son Mahendra Varman, who ruled from 600 to 630 BC. Mahendra Varman was a very learned person, a poet, and a skilled musician. His instrument of choice was the Veena. He was also a patron of the arts, music, and architecture, which flourished during his reign. Mahabalipuram near Chennai were initiated by Mahindra Varman. Narsimha Varman was Mahindra Varman's brave and intelligent son. He had taken control of Badami and continued to rule over it for 13 years. With his powerful navy, he also helped the king of Simhala, Sri Lanka, to get back his lost kingdom. Narsimha Varman, during his reign, completed the beautiful temples of Mahabalipuram. He also built a host of other temples like the Kailasantha Temple at Kanchipuram and the Shora Temple. He was a great wrestler and had earned the title of Mamala, which is why Mahabalipuram is also known as Mamalapuram.
so children let me wish to complete this session with this hope everybody understood the administration under the pallava kings right so in the next video i'll meet you with the great informations of chalukyas right still then stay tuned stay connected thank you bye